Okay, hello everyone. So thanks to Nikita and all the mental spin organizers for this exciting workshop after the pandemic. So today I would like to share with you our experience about the human tissue clearing imaging and the application. Okay. Okay, so we all know that the tissue is a 3D dynamic dish in both health and the disease, which is composed by different types of cells and involves a large number of the molecules, including the proton, DNA, and the RNA. To study the natural tissue environment, the 3D tissue imaging method based on the tissue clearing are quite promising and informative compared to the traditional 2D slides. So uh, in general speaking, the 3D tissue imaging pipeline include the five steps that all the others concluded before. The first step is the tissue collection, the fixation, which kind of tissue are interested and how to fix it to cross-link the proton or DNA or RNA. The second step is how to label the tissue. Uh, for some kind of the tissue like the animal model, we can use the very advanced uh, transgenic tools or virus tracing to label the tissue. But for the human organs, we can only rely on the post staining method using the antibody or DNA probes. So the third step is to choose a proper tissue clear method for your specific tissue. Right now, we already sum summarized that there are three categories, tissue clear method, the hydrophobic reagent, hydrophilic uh, reagent, and the hydrogel based tissue clear method. Next is how to choose a proper microscope system to image and acquire 3D data. And the last step is how to handle the big data for visualization and also quantitative analysis. So in terms of the human tissue, there are several challenges existing in each steps. So um, for example, about the uh, in, about the tissue collection, we need to consider where is the tissue come from, and how big of the size is it an uh, intact organ or a small piece of the human tissue, and also how old about the tissue. Because we all know that following the age, there is a combination of the lipofuscin and the insoluble collagens, which can make the tissue components are more complex. And also about the labeling step, we need to consider if the antibodies or the DNA probes can penetrate homogeneously to the whole tissue blocks. And if we are interested to several markers, how to distribute the markers to different kinds of the Florence channel. So, and also there are other questions in like um, existing in each of these steps. Today, I will focus on um, talk about how we develop the Chanel tissue clearing and how we try to address all of these challenges. So uh, what is Chanel? Chanel means that the small micellar mediated human organ efficient clearing and the labeling. Traditionally, um, people use the Triton or SDS to promineralize the tissue. And from the chemical structure, we can see that no matter Triton or SDS, they have a, a head to tail structure, like one end is hydrophobic, one end is hydrophilic. And with this structure, when we dissolve the detergent into water, it forms much larger micellars, which can get stuck on the surface of the tissue. So here we identify the shafts has a very special structure and it has a rigid steroidal structure. It has a hydrophobic convex side and a hydrophilic concave side. This will form a facial and facility. So when we dissolve the shaft into the water, it forms much smaller micellar. So this, this micellar could uh, penetrate deeply and efficiently into the whole tissue blocks. So to prove our hypothesis, first we use the small uh, angle X-ray scattering to mirror the radius of the degradation of the detergent micellars. Clearly, we can see that the shafts has much smaller radiance uh, of the degradation compared to the SDS or Triton, which means that it forms much smaller micellars. 
Another experiment we used to validate the heart size it used the uh, dye penetration experiment. All the tissue blocks, we incubated them with different kinds of the detergents and also together with a methylene blue dye. After several hours, we will cut into the middle part of the tissue and to check how the inner part, the labeling efficiency. We can clearly see that in the Sharps group, the methylene blue dye can penetrate very uh, deeply into the center part of the tissue and homogeneously label the tissue. But for the other two groups, the methylene blue dye only label the surface of the tissue. I think this is also why people develop the efficient 3D immune learning method trying to increase the labeling efficiency. And the, here on the right side is the quantification data to show you that all, uh, all, all the SHAPS groups can like uh, basically 100% like labeling the whole tissue blocks. So next step, what we want to figure out is try to screen also a chemical which can um, compatible with the shafts and uh, for uh, to decolorize the, 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 the blood color. We all know that the human organs always carry a lot of blood clots, even though after PFA fixation or PBS perfusion. So here uh, we use the PFA fixed blood to screen all different kinds of candidates which can interact with the heme of the, uh, of, uh, inside of the blood. And then we identify that the chemical seven is also a methanol and diethanol imine, which can efficiently decolorize uh, decolorize the, the red color of the bladder and also are quite cheap, which we can apply to the very large human organs. So uh, after we develop all those, all these chemical cocktails, we summarize the whole Chanel pipeline to uh, handling from the, collect the tissue collection until the data analyzed for the whole human samples. Like here, the first step needed to consider where your human organs come from. Is it an intact organ? Is it can connect to some of the uh, pump to, to use the active pumping method? Or it's just a small piece of the human biopsy and then try to then adapt to use the passive incubation method. And with these two different methods, you go through a series of the uh, cocktail chemicals. And then later you do the immune staining also with the antibodies. We also develop uh, the protocol trying to make the antibody can penetrate into centimeter size of the human tissue. And then based on the organic chemicals, we use the ethanol and the bubble solution to make the whole human organs become transparent. And then we come to the uh, image part with the light sheet. And then to stitch all the data for 3D visualization and the, uh, and the quantity analyze. So here is an example how we set up the uh, active perfusion process for the intact human organs. This is a human um, kidney, how, um, when we receive it after the dissection from the donor. And uh, uh, during the dissection, we already connect the main vessels to the tube there, and also you fix them tightly. And using a peristaltic uh, pump, we can like uh, connect, the, uh, connect your labeling dye or your clear reagents together with the organ and then with this pump, you can perfuse dye into the tissue and also perfuse all the clear regions into your tissue. And here shows all the connectors and the reference tubes, how we linked all these two parts. And this, this pump has four reference channels. That means that we can handle in several organs at the same time. So, oh, sorry. Based on the whole setup, we managed to clear the whole human organs. For example, here I show that the human kidney and also even the whole human brain, the biggest organ inside of our uh, human body. 
actually not only can clear the uh, human organs, we also tried it for some other kind of um, mammalian organs, like the pig brain and also pig penguins. In the end, we all managed to make them quite transparent. So next question we want to figure out is how to image this large, the human organs. We know that with the commercialized uh, uh, um, light sheet microscope is quite, uh, quite difficult to image these large organs. So we collaborate with LaVention company and now I think it's Nautini company to develop a prototype of ultra microscope place. And then now I think that they already commercialized it. And this microscope has a very large imaging, uh, imaging chamber or sample holding chamber like 25 by nine by seven centimeters. Here you can see that very large one. And basically with this uh, big uh, sample holder, we managed to image a lot of human organs, including the human kidney, human pancreas, or, uh, or like a human um, thyroid, yeah. So on the right side is an example that how we trying to uh, how how we try to manage to image the whole intact human organ. This is a human pancreas before the clearing and after clearing. You can see they are quite transparent. You can see the under grid. And uh, here shows that how um, mm, the setups, how we how we mount the sample onto the sample folder. We use these tapes and the glues to stick all the intact human organ, uh, organs on the sample folder. But uh, mm, we also aware that this uh, sample holder along this wide direction, there's only like a, have a narrow range for the moving as the moving ridge. So we cannot like uh, uh, image the intact human organ at one round of the uh, scanning. So what we do is we set several uh, several round of, uh, round of the imaging. And uh, for each time we align, align the sample holder image and with our sample end. And uh, for the second round, the other will round the alignment the other uh, the other end of the sample. So there is also have the overlapping between the uh, in the inner part of the tissue. So with all this image, the tube uh, image the three D uh, data volume, we can uh, fuse them together with the iRiverse uh, micro uh, software. So. Basically, we can um, load all the different uh, 3D data volume into the software. And uh, we, um, when you zoom into the, the detail, we will try to find the same co-localize or the same signal of the, uh, of the two t uh, data blocks. And then based on, based on this uh, same signal, we identify three markers. And then based on these three markers, we can reconstruct the whole uh, organ data set. Here on the right side, is, uh, is we show that after the fusion of the intact data, we um, load them into the MRIs. And the, when you zoom in, you can check the whole uh, details and also the whole um, uh, holistic view of the of the data. So after we can re reconstruct the whole human organs, we want also to do some quantitative analysis. And here I show the two examples. And the, on the left side is um, in EGFP peak pancreas where the beta cells express the GFP. And after the whole Chanel clearing, and imaging, we have the 3D reconstruction of the data. And when you zoom in, you can see that the beta cells could be a single cell or a group of cell to form the isolate. And based on their volume or the size of the isolate, we can quantify the numbers and also the percentage of the isolate. And on the right side is a, 
an example about the whole human kidney. This human kidney, we label the, the vessels with the dexedrine dry, and also label the, the cell nuclear with the topo 3, which are only expressed uh, or highly expressed as the uh, glomeruli area of the kidney. So after the whole 3D imaging and the reconstruction, we when we zoom into the details, you can see the, the, the very uh, tortured vasculature structures and also the small gloom leaves. And we can quantify their size and also their, uh, the, the vessel's diameter. So uh, all of this data, we analyzed the, uh, using the uh, commercialized software like the IMARIS or ImageGene. But in some cases, when the data are quite big and your data quality are not so good, so with the commercialized software, it's quite, it's quite uh, difficult to handle it. And also, you cannot get a reliable detection or segmentation. So we also trying to develop a deeper learning method to get a reliable and efficient data uh, quantification. Here, based on the convolutional neural network, we develop this deep learning method trying to detection and the segmentation and the counting the cell numbers in different kind of the area of the human brain. Here you can see this is the original light sheet data uh, we collected from the uh, human brain. And we can always see that there are shadows or, or some like artifacts. And after the deep learning um, processing, this is the binary data we generated that you can clearly see that each of the spot is a single cell. And uh, based on this method, we can uh, very fast, 10 times faster than the commercialized uh, uh, software to uh, detect segments and uh, count the cells numbers here. So, um, not only like we can clear the uh, soft tissues of the human body, we're also trying to adopt the whole uh, Chanel clear method for other kind of tissue types. Here I showed uh, two examples that's how um, we clear the human bone structures. The left is a pelvinian um, structure and the, the right uh, side is a skull example. So we also first like to do the decalcification as the general step for all the bone structures and then go to the standard Chanel tissue clearing. And in the end, we also managed to clear all these like hard tissues of the human body. And uh, no matter the, the, the tissue are quite big or just a small piece, you can also collect the 3D data and zoom into the detail um, to, 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 um, to check all the details of the, the uh, bone structures. And um, also at the same time, we're trying to uh, improve this uh, Chanel technology to increase the antibody penetration efficiency. So here we showed an example uh, that the IBM one labeled the human brain for the microglia cells. Uh, after the Chanel pretreatment, and uh, we put the antibody into the whole tissue block. This is like a centimeter sized human brain tissue block. And after several days of the incubation with primary antibody and also secondary antibody, so we can see that the antibody can penetrate deeply and homogeneously into the tissue. And when we zoom into the de detail, we can um, distinguish the structure difference between the green matter and the white matter. Here we can see the more larger and the rounded uh, microglia uh, cells, and here on the uh, on the white matter they are much smaller. So um, with all of the data, it's already uh, bring me to the conclusion that the Chanel technology we combine also multidisciplinary knowledge uh, like a chemistry, engineering, computer, and trying to study the 
holistic 3D cellular mapping of the human organs by the tissue clearing and the imaging technology. But for sure, for in future, like a, a, a broader application, we also trying to want to figure out other challenges. For one technical challenge is that uh, how to achieve a high content and also high context 3D volume energy. As I mentioned before that right now, even though we can clear a very big uh, or very large sized uh, tissue, that because of the color barrier of the fluorescence, we generally have four or five channels with the standard uh, microscope. So for each round of the labeling, you can manage to label two or four or five colors. But clearly we also know that with the traditional 2D slides, there are already a lot of method developers based on the mass cytometry or immune Florence standing method like the MIF or SciSIF. They already achieved more than 30 different kinds of markers. And using this, using this like 2D slides, they can use to, to like uh, analyze a very big uh, cohort of the human clinical samples, like uh, the human cancer samples, breast cancer or pancreas cancer or whatever. They can collect this kind of tissue and the label one time or several times using iterative uh, labeling or like uh, stripping or other kind of things to get a very high content information to analyze all the phenotypes of the tissue. And then to analyze for the, uh, analyze like uh, the immune cells, stromal cells or vasculature cells, uh, different subtypes of the cancer cells for a clinical diagnosis. So I think uh, in future, for our tissue clear method, we also needed to try to develop or to adopt, uh, develop um, uh, advanced method also to showing high content of the cell markers, not only in big volume, also a, a big, a large number of the molecules. On the other side is also how to incorporate some of the other model uh, data, like the sequencing data and how to develop some of the computer you know, uh, analyzed pipeline, trying to uh, get a reliable data uh, segmentation and the uh, clustering or cell-cell uh, interaction, all these kind of analysis tools, make them more uh, user-friendly and also can uh, extensively applicable to the human, human tissues. So um, at the end, I would like to thank my PhD lab, Ali Ertix lab, where I did my PhD, and uh, all our uh, previous lab members and also collaborators in the LMU or, or the um, uh, Leipzig University, where they provide all the human organs. And also thank my postdoc lab, Bob Miller's lab. Right now, we are trying to develop uh, some uh, um, High content and also high complex, uh, uh, high content, high components of the tissue labeling method. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, there are several questions. Sven Hildebrand, please. Uh, yes, um, Hachan, thanks for the for the great talk. Um, I have. Uh, like uh, two uh, smaller technical questions. So I noticed that you switched from, or that you use uh, ethanol for the dehydration instead of, for example, the methanol of the Idisco Plus. Did you do this because of more cost reasons or because you saw a clearing uh, advantage of that? And then the, the other question would be that I love the idea of uh, pumping the dye through, through these large organs. Um, but I was wondering, because you mentioned blood clots, um, would this maybe uh, or do you have experience if you would damage the tissue if you have blood clots, let's say, in the smaller blood vessels, and then you pump against that, basically? Yeah, um, thank you very much for the question. About the first question that, uh, uh, for, uh, in, yeah, in, it is true that in the Chanel tissue clear method, we also like uh, use the methanol. You mean here we use, uh, use the ethanol? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, no, actually, we choose Asno just because it's more uh, human, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> environment, environment friendly, and the human yeah. friendly. And uh, I mean, for Masano, we all, we also tried. I think it's worked because this is yeah. not the very important step for for the for the human organ clearing. The the main step, as I or the main mechanism behind it is that we choose this smaller micelle, which can the shafts which can penetrate the tissue. Mm -hmm. After you permeabilize the, the the tissue, no matter you use uh, you know other kind of uh, clear regions to dehydrate your tissue or or are uh, matching, they are quite fine actually. So this is not the key step of the whole protocol. Yeah, um, yeah, about the second uh, question, uh, um, this, this about the second question that we did the um, experiments on mice actually at the time, and for sure that the the pump speed or the pressure you can adjust by yourself, you can set it mm -hmm. right. And the, another um, precondition is that the tissue are already fixed, the PFV fixed, all the interested protein or, or, or the components are already cross-linked. So it can, can some kind of, you know, resistant to the pressure. So based on our experiments with the mouse that we pump with the mouse and we see the things, we don't think uh, that there's a uh, very obvious or, or detectable, you know, microstructure changes based on the pressure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye.